Right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and our friends from Small Vines, Small Vineyards. And oh, anyways, they're, uh, they've got a lot of vineyards that they don't make a lot of wine and they're very reasonably priced. I remember the first time I saw these guys, I said, how do you guys make a living? I mean, all these wines are very limited and they're all really good and they're all really inexpensive. So they got a couple things now that are expensive. These Eddie Simchik wines, his top wines, are amazing from Slovenia. And well, they're not cheap, but they are amazing wines. As was this uh, first wine from the Ratskateli varietal. I never had this before, but for $11.75, this Macedonian white, incredibly complex, man. Very crisp and clean, even on the nose. It's got a salty kind of green melon fruit and white flower notes. Really light and refreshing on the palate. Nice spritz to the finish. Really unique. Very clean, very uh, uh, pretty floral notes. That briny character also. Wow, for eleven seventy-five, a very good, unique varietal that most people have never heard of. All right, the Jubilee Sauvignon Blanc from Alto Adige. It's a group of small growers. And um, they have a lot of co-ops up in this area, but this is a very small one. Dates back to 1870. Wow. And they focus more on, you know, quality. And um, this guy's got a classic nose of Sauvignon Blanc, though, kind of white grapefruit, citrus, hint of green melon, and that kind of an onion skin, kind of earthy character. Really bright and refreshing on the tongue, that uh, musky uh, onion skin character, that minerality shown through on the finish, as well that salty, briny note. Leaves the tongue salivating for food. Very good little Sauvignon Blanc for $17. All right, the Simchik Chardonnay from Slovenia. Only 606 packs. Everything this guy does, I have been amazed by. Even his entry-level Giacato stuff for 10 bucks. Incredible value. This Chardonnay uh, sees older oak, second, third passage for the most part. Um, and this one's got a good amount of tree fruit here. Ripe pear and apple. A little bit of toasty oak spice there. Adds a little you know, complexity to it. That gravelly, minery, flinty note also there. Really nice richness on the wine. You can tell that from all of these wines. They just lower yields in the vineyard is how you get that. A nice creamy texture. Just the right hand of lightly toasted oak spice and that flinty stone-like mineral coming through at the end. Excellent juice at 35 and a quarter. All right, the Brunelli uh, Poggio Apricale. This is uh, the first estate to the southeast of Montalcino, uh, the town there, only seven hectares. And they do make a Brunello, but uh, this vineyard is a little further down. It's planted with Colorino and Merlot. Really interesting uh, combination there. Nice red berry fruit showing on the nose here. You get a hint of that, the wild kind of boar character, you know, because there's wild boars running around in the vineyard, scratching on the vines. And uh, you get a little bit coming out in the wine as well as some pretty floral notes, a real red licorice spice. Really light and zesty wine on the tongue. Silky smooth tannins. So short but pleasant finish. That lovely pretty floral note and that animal character at the end. Very good juice at 17.25. Really unique red. All right, Jubilee Le Grind from Alta to Adige, and uh, this is a really unique varietal, a red from uh, north of Italy, and uh, it's got a wild character to it too, man. Wild flowers, some game, black spices, really aromatic black blueberry, huckleberry kind of fruit, big and chewy on the tongue with smooth tannins, though. It's a more drinkable style of a Lagrine. Some of them can be a little bit rough around the edges, that pretty floral and gamey note lasting through the finish, but uh, really smooth, very good juice at $17. Some great values here, man. Poderi Ciona, a semifonte, semifonte from Tuscany. Only 200 cases of this brine produced, which is a blend of Merlot and Alicante Boucher. Really dark grape varietal. This wine's got a dark plum and cherry fruit, hint of violet kind of floral, lavender notes, black licorice, earth, kind of fine herbs. This wine's got a good amount of juicy berry fruit, some gritty tannins coming in at the end. That Alicante really uh, can be a little rough around the edges. Some nice floral character there as well. Very good juice. Very unique, all these wines, like I said, man. The, the Simchik Duet, uh, this is 706 packs, all he makes, 80% Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc make up the rest of this, and this is a dead ringer for a Bordeaux, man. You put this in a blind tasting, really Bordelais on the nose, that cigar, kind of tobacco spice, fresh earthy notes, the currant and plum fruit there, really nice complexity on the note, on the nose, and very complex on the palate. Not a big wine, but has a lot of nuance to the finish. The Merlot, really soft and plush texture on the tongue. Uh, really bright acidity in this wine. Also, that herbs and dried tobacco spice through the finish. Excellent juice. At $39, that's what we had to drink with our friends from Small Vineyards. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.